Hello, I'm Kendra Von Esch, and you are listening to my 10-minute daily podcast, Reality Reflections. I bought into what this world said would make me happy. Money, prestige, power, and hey, if it feels good, do it, because life is stressful, so party hard. Do whatever makes you happy. But that didn't quite work out, because I felt even more insecure, full of fear, shame and anxiety, and never, ever good enough. Then God found me and flipped my reality upside down and transformed my life. And I want this for everyone. So I left my executive career to help others find true acceptance, supernatural peace, joy, and love that only comes from a relationship with God. Here is my reality reflection for today. I'm back. Hello, everyone. It's so great to be here. I missed you. I hope you missed me. What's been going on? I'm sure you can't tell me, but I'm going to ask through this podcast. We'll do a little check-in of the mind, body, soul surrounded by God's spirit. How's that going? Well, let me just kind of give you guys an update of what's been going on with me. My husband and I have been traveling God's green earth, it seems like, over the past week and a half. We went from Chicago down to Tennessee. It's about an eight-hour trip in a car. Everything's in a car. We saw our property. It was super exciting. I am going to do a video. I'll share that little property thing in that video. So if you are not a subscriber of my YouTube channel, get on out there, hit subscribe, hit the black bell so that you won't miss a video ever. So during that time, it was great. We met with another builder. We're kind of leaning toward a much cheaper home than your traditional build. We're looking at what they call a barn dominium. So it's like a barn, but a house and We're actually looking for it just to be kind of put up as a shell so that we finish everything inside. Am I happy about this? No. (laughs) Do I like doing projects like that? No. My husband, on the other hand, has the charism of building. He can build things. He has the mind to see and to calculate and to make things. Me? I can't even design like a craft. I'm not a builder, but I'm a good helper. I'm a good quality control person and I'm a really good cleaner upper. So I'm sure between the two of us, we can make this work. And then we hightailed it over to Atlanta, which was another, I don't know, seven hour drive from where we were at. Stayed there for a couple of days and then shot down. I had so much fun with my husband's nieces and nephews. I guess they're my nieces and nephews too, but they're on my husband's side of the house, family, if you will. And then we drove down for, geez, another 10 hours to, oh wait, first we went to Pensacola, which was a six hour drive. Then we drove another 10 hours down to Florida. And that's where we are this week with my mom. And it's been wonderful. We're waiting for the weather to kind of turn. I'm getting a little bit of sun. So I'm excited to get some vitamin D from the sun itself. We have not seen much sun on our bodies, at least my husband and I being in the Chicagoland area for the last month and a half. So it is wonderful. Okay. Mind, body, soul. What has been going on? We're looking at day 30 of this new 2023 year. For those who are just kind of catching up or just found this channel, I did a five-day, nine-hour prolonged fast as of December 31st. What that means was I didn't eat anything. I had vitamin D, vitamin C supplements, and then I took um, salt and potassium. That's it. And I felt wonderful. I was on a euphoric high. My body was dropping bloat for sure. There was a lot of water. Usually when that happens, what I found under my research, it's about five to six pounds of water 
because what's happening is your body is depleting the glycogen stores in your muscles and in your tissues, and that's where we get the bloat. That's why when you eat high carb foods and high sugary foods, you're bloated, maybe having digestive issues. I'm not sure, but that's what I learned. It was water mainly, but then it continued on. So the initial 13 pounds that I lost and the what 3% body fat and the 1% muscle that I gained, I continued to lose the body fat and I'm kind of in the same state as far as weight, but my body composition is changing. As I work out, I'm gaining muscle. And while I'm here, I'm going into the gym that my mom has and I'm doing some weights with machines. It's really cool. I'm excited to see the body change and I have been on top of it. I've been paying attention. I'm trying to eat when I'm truly hungry, when I know that I have those pangs coming or just to kind of shock the body a little bit. I've also been doing a lot of intermittent fasting where I just eat at night in between a certain hour of time. For me, it's usually like between five and eight. That's a pretty short window. Lots of people do intermittent fasting where they have a six hour window where they can eat like a later lunch and an earlier dinner. Bottom line, I've been shaking it up and trying to pay attention to the body. And I've noticed down here in Florida, we thought we got some wild caught shrimp. It was not wild caught shrimp. It was farm raised. And I know for a fact because my body was so sore. I was so inflamed. I couldn't believe it. Every joint in my body hurt. And it took a day for it to go away. But the minute the next day came, I did another intermittent fast to just kind of clean out whatever was in me. And I felt great for sure by the next morning. But I'm noticing how certain things make me feel and how my body reacts to the food that I'm putting in it, to the exercise that I'm stressing it out with, what works, what doesn't work. I've been mixing up high intensity interval training, but I find that my body's not so good with that as much as I thought it would be. I'm better with long, consistent walks, which is, by the way, when you burn most fat, when you do the high intensity and running, you are burning the glycogen glycogen stores. Sorry about that. In your body, you eventually burn more calories, but you're not directly burning fat. And when we are trying to lose weight, that's the part that we're trying to lose is the fat. And then the soul. So yeah, it sounds like I've been paying a lot of attention to the mind and the body. And I have been paying attention to the soul. I've got a few things that I'm working through. I'm processing some emotions, some feelings. And I've been going to confession. I just went to confession down here. Very strange. I've got to tell you guys this one. I'm excited to go to confession. My mom shares that it's like in a church where you stand and you face the the priest, which I'm fine with, and then you leave. It's just all open. There's four or five like priests and it's for a half an hour on Saturday. That's the only time that they have confession. So sad, but I go and I'm confessing and I did not get asked to say my act of contrition, which blew me away. And I get it because maybe people don't know it, but at least you can have a laminated card that you hand to them to have them pray. That's what they do in most confessionals where they tape it on the armrest or on the wall. And then I was so blown away by that, that I can't even remember if the guy actually Absolve me of my sins by saying, you know, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, I absolve you of your sins. Like they have to say that, by the way. I don't know if he said it because I was so blown away at not saying the act of contrition. 
I'm just going to hope and pray, and I may go again just to be sure, maybe go to another parish around here. I don't know if you've ever had a situation where you felt like you were not absolved. And in certain cases, that could be true. If they don't say what they're supposed to say, yeah, it's pretty much not valid. Kind of scary, isn't it? But I don't know for sure. I'm pretty sure he did. I was just blown away by the whole experience. It was very bizarre. But if I think about the rest of my soul, I wasn't doing my morning prayer. I was squeezing in my rosary. A couple times I missed it completely. I was jamming in my catechism in a year, like doing three or four days at once, which was okay. I guess I did it. <laughs> I'm still, I'm on probably 20, day 29, so I still have two more days to catch up with. I didn't do it yesterday, so I'm kind of that kind of a person, not every single day. And I am noticing that I need that prayer time. It's hard when you're on vacation, but I'm looking at the rest of my day. I am finding time to work out and to stretch and to, you know, do other things on my list. Why am I not praying first thing? Because I know how different I am when I do. If I am praying in the morning, that's why I was happy to get back to you. I come into the room, I pray, I read the readings, I sit with God before I come on this podcast every day. So it does ground me, root me in prayer, in God. And it starts off my day on the right foot. And it's hard when we're on vacation. It's hard when we're not doing our normal, regular, scheduled stuff. So that's why I'm coming to you all to inspire you to stick with your desired schedule. The one that you want to have. Because if you remember, discipline is good. Discipline is freeing you from this thing that has been something that you've been fighting for a long, long time. And the more that you actually stick with that plan, that, that discipline nature in your bones, you will not only feel free, but you will feel empowered. That word is so key empowering you to just take hold of your life, your mind, your body, your soul, and not allow any outside circumstances or outside spirits or the world or people to get in your face and misguide you, redirect you, or control you. This is where we have to be very conscious about who we hang out with, what we're watching, what we're doing, and to fight the fight because it could be powers and principalities that are really in your kitchen and you haven't fought with deliverance prayers. I'm struggling right now. I'm going through a process of trying to find that forgiveness and that mercy in my heart. I'm not there. I gave it to God. I don't have those feelings that attach to it. So it's tough. It's super tough. But the more that I pray and the more that I go to God, I find that being alleviated off of my shoulders. And I trust that God will change my heart. But then there are days when I don't talk to God about it and it starts to weigh on me. We all want to be Christ-like, but we're very human. The difference is when do we go to God? 
how quickly do we realize that we cannot do it on our own? We just heard the Beatitudes on Sunday. Blessed are those who are poor in spirit, for they will inherit the kingdom of heaven. Poor in spirit means this, everyone. I cannot do anything without you, Lord. I can't do anything. The people who are poor in spirit and who realize through their own humility and that beautiful gift of faith that we can do nothing without God. So while I reflect on my mind, body, soul over this last week and a half or so since we haven't talked, I know that God needs to be more in my life, especially first thing. It's kind of hard to do when you're stuffed into a hotel or you're stuffed in somebody else's house or maybe your plans aren't exactly your plans because you have other people's plans on your plate. But there is always time for God. We can always choose him to love him. And I guess that's the biggest thing over these last few days that I have realized is there but isn't the center of my life. So that's what I'm going to work on. I'm going to continue to work on the body, the mind. I'm still learning. I'm constantly going out there figuring out what is this going on with my body? What is that going on with my body? And it's been wonderful and I'm grateful that I'm paying attention. And I actually found, oh, shoot, I want to share something with you. Let's do it. Let's do it. Sorry, it's going to be a little bit longer. You all know that I did the prolonged fasting, five days, nine hours. I'm going to share something with you, a little bit of my health, private, confidential stuff. But back in the day, Sorry, guys, you may not know this, but back in the day, women all of a sudden started getting HPV tested on their pap exam. And I just had a pap exam with my full physical the first week of January. And back when they did it, I don't know, someone may know the time that they started testing this, but it was 7, 8, 10, 5, 11 years ago, like I have no clue. It's, it seems like it's been forever. <clears throat> Excuse me. But when I got told that I had it, I freaked out. Like, oh my gosh, how did I get this? Well, hello. I was very promiscuous for most of my life. I'm sure I've had the HPV virus forever. Forever. And I was like, okay, well, what do you do? And she says, oh, your body usually fights it off. It's no big deal. But then every other, every year I would go in for the pap exam, I would get the same abnormal cells and I would have to go into a specialist, not my general practitioner, but into a gynecologist and have a colcoscopy, not a colonoscopy, wrong hole. (laughs) One's your butt. The other one is a woman's part. Sorry for my brash talking here, but colcoscopy goes in and it actually takes particles of your cervix. So think about a big, you know, big, long tweezer plucking. It's not comfortable at all, plucking cells off your cervix. So I had that twice and I kept asking more questions. Look, this is the key, everyone. You cannot just look at your doctor and say, oh, okay, I'll do this. I'll do that. I'll take this pill. I'll take that prescription and not look into it and ask questions that are specific to you. We are, what I'm finding out is we are so different that no chart that your doctor goes by could be necessarily right for you. And if you look at how the medical world is structured, you have an internist, a cardiologist, you have, um, you know, an orthopedics person, you've got a 
nerve person, a nerve, you've got the brain surgeon, you've got the muscle person, you've got all these different people. You need a full holistic and general practitioner. Practitioners are not it. You need a full view of your body and your body is unique. So as I tell you things that are going on with me, with me, you know, um, intermittent fasting, 100% keto eating, I'm going to be different than you. You may be pre-diabetic. You may be post-menopausal. You may be this or that or the other, and I'm not. We're all so different. So that's why it's so important to pay attention. So I get the results back this year. I have no HPV virus and all of my cells are 100% normal. I looked at my husband and I said, you can't tell me the one thing I did different was my fasting, my prolonged fasting. You cannot tell me that autophagy, which is where your body eats dead proteins, dead viruses, live viruses, and cancer, I mean, they attack the crud in your body. And he looked at me and he goes, yeah, you healed yourself, didn't you, kid? I said, I did. And now I'm looking at my other autoimmune deficiencies. I've got vitiligo, white spots all over my hands and feet, elbows and knees. It's when your pigment doesn't come. It actually is Michael, what Michael Jackson had. So if you remember when Michael Jackson put a glove on his right hand, it was because he had vitiligo because his pigment was white on that hand. And then he just bleached his skin so that you couldn't tell. So for me, in the winter, you can't really tell. But now that I'm down here and I'm getting some sun, they're coming back, but they're coming, but they're different. They're changing a little bit. And so I'm going to try a few other things. I'm looking into some ways that I can help my autoimmune deficiency. And that is where people are talking about prolonged fasting. People are talking about that carnivore diet. Obviously, Keto is a, is a part, it's not full carnivore. I mean, in carnivore, you don't eat any vegetables. The keto that I'm on is a very high fat, um, moderate protein diet, but it does have lots of leafy greens and lots of low starch vegetables. Anyway, <laughs> I hate to go into all of this, but this is what I really want to share because whatever is ailing you, I have seen pictures of people with horrible psoriasis, horrible boils all over their bodies where they'd have to go get them lanced off by a doctor. People who were morbidly obese, who went through prolonged fasting, who went through intermittent fasting, and who allowed their bodies to heal themselves and take themselves away from all the poisons that we have in so many of our foods that our bodies are just trying to digest and keep us safe from. I mean, we need detoxification. This whole world is just filled with stuff that is so bad for us. So we need to help it out every now and then. Anyway, that's why I'm sharing this with you because I want you to know how happy I was. I actually went into the file on my patient portal. I was so excited to see, did it work? Did it work? Did it work? And unfortunately, I read the report thinking that it was abnormal. It said, see attached file. There was no attached file. But it did say, I don't know, maybe it didn't say abnormal. Regardless, I didn't think I fixed me. And so when I got the call and I heard the news, I was ecstatic. I was elated. I was so happy. There's more to tell on this whole medical thing, but that is just enough for me to share and to give you that encouragement in case you're in your first month of 2023 and you just have no motivation to move forward with anything. I saw it in my mom's neighbor yesterday. 
she came over and she's like, oh, I've got to plant a couple of these flowers today. And I just have no energy to do anything. And I looked at her and I felt exactly what she felt. I know exactly what that feeling is to have no energy, to want to just lay in bed. Maybe you even have aches and pains. You're just lethargic. And anything, you know, gosh, don't even talk to me about exercise. Don't talk to me about taking care of my body. And it was a reminder to my face. I even told my husband when we walked away, I said, dude, that was how I used to feel. And he said, you were that bad? I said, do you remember how many times I would just go up and say, I need a nap? He's like, yeah, you don't do that anymore. I said, exactly. There is such a difference. And that's why I share. You all know I share my heart. Everything is on my sleeve. Even though I'm not wearing sleeves down here in Florida. <laughs> well, I'm wearing short sleeves, but that's what it's about sharing these amazing moments, these epiphanies that God opens my mind to how I can live a better life with him, with discipline, with learning how my body works, with learning more about how my soul feeds my body and how I can love obedience and discipline. What a wild ride because my entire life I couldn't stand discipline. Nothing about it was attractive. I admired it in other people. So you can do this. When people would say to me in my prolonged fasting, which by the way, I'm going to do again, not sure when, but during my prolonged fasting, people would say, there is no way I could do that. And you can, because I thought the same thing. There's no way I could do this, but the fact that I felt so good, which initially, everyone, I told you that I didn't know why I felt so good. Maybe God was just doing great things for me so I could share it. No, no, no. This is like normal. People who do this feel incredible. And if you don't, it's because you need a little salt. You need a little potassium because our bodies need those electrolytes together. That's the only thing that most people don't do or make the mistake of when they're going through it. Because you should feel amazing. Okay, I'm, I'm done. I'm just sharing how I am appreciating God putting me back in touch with my body and making me whole, if that makes sense. Look, we are mind, body, soul. We do not disconnect. We cannot work on one and not work on the other. They're all working together. Remember I mentioned that Venn diagram where the three circles and are kind of in a triangle and the middle parts of those circles overlap? Well, that's us right in the middle. So let's assess what is going on in our mind, our body, our soul. Are we praying? Are we continuing to ignite our brain with knowledge, spiritual knowledge, spiritual reading, more knowledge about our bodies, more knowledge about how to heal our bodies, praying through everything that you're reading, taking control and protecting yourself from stress. That's another one. We'll talk about that probably tomorrow that I've realized, oh my goodness, I can really get myself stressed out and I don't want that cortisol building up and harming me. We'll talk about that tomorrow. It's really, really cool. And this is not all going to be about diet and medicine and all that kind of stuff because it is a big part of what I'm doing right now, but it really is about life, mind, body, soul. All of this is how we live our life. And the more we live it with God, the more truth we're going to be brought to, the more healing we're going to have. Again, mind, body, soul. 
and how enlightened we will be to do God's will in our lives. All right, this was a long one. (laughs) I hope that you guys are all doing well. Drop me a note, put in some comments. I miss you all so much. I will talk to you tomorrow. Don't forget, find something more with God, whatever that is. Whatever you know you need him for, he's your answer always. And have a blessed and inspired day.